Hello and welcome to another Replica Reviews video. Now today, as I'm sure you've seen from the title, we've been really lucky and we've managed to get ourselves hold of one of the new Cybergun Limited Edition 1911s. Now this is the D-Day commemorative version. Only 240 were ever made and we've been really lucky enough to get our hands on one. Now as I'm sure you can see from the screen, it does come in quite a big box. It's an incredibly plain box so I'm not really going to talk on about the packaging too much. But what we do have it's just the old traditional um, front. Um, it's just a stick on label, it's nothing special, but it really starts getting special as you start opening the box up. Now, tucked away at the bottom of the package was this little user manual. It's just really standard stuff. I'm not really going to spend too much time on it. Just don't shoot your friends in the face. Um, how to load the magazine, etc. So, move this to one side. And we'll start looking at the really interesting stuff uh, that I'm sure you're really wanting to see more than the, a user manual. Now the first thing really that kind of struck my eye was the Certificate of, of Authenticity. Uh, this is number 173 of 240 that have ever been made. So as I said at the start of the video, we're really, really lucky to get hold of this gun. So we'll move this to one side and we'll just carry on. Another really neat little feature, if I can get it out, this is, is the little dog tag that they've done here. It's the Colt 1911 D-Day edition uh, label and on the other side is the Colt traditional horse logo. It's a really really nice um, finish on this. It feels really sturdy and it's just one of those things I'm really kind of pleased that they chose to include these things because it kind of sets it above some of the other 1911 editions that are out at the moment. So we'll move this to one side and we'll move on to what I personally feel is the uh, the main kind of collectible as such which I've kind of hidden in this um, bubble wrap and this is basically just a little tube of sand now this one here comes from Sword Beach um, this was the one if I remember correctly the British um, mostly led the assault on and if I do also remember correctly um, it had the least resistance um, as I'm pretty certain it was because there was artillery I think it was maybe six to nine miles inland so the Germans weren't really expecting it. So the British apparently managed to land without too much of a problem. So it's really nice to have just this. It just adds a real personal touch. And as you can see inside, there's also a little 45 ACP shell casing. Whether it's 100% real, I'm not sure. It has been drilled in the side. I don't know if you can see that. But it looks pretty realistic um, regardless. So that just kind of adds to it. And what's really nice is it just has a little label on here telling you what beach it came from. So we'll move that to one side, being very careful of it. And as you can see here left is just the gun. Now underneath all of this lovely um, packaging we do have a little pack of BBs. They're hidden right down the bottom. They're just little standard um, BBs. It's worth noting at this point that it's a 6mm gun. It uses CO2, little 12 gram CO2 cartridge, but it's 6mm. So what we're going to do is obviously get the gun out We'll get it all focused up again and we'll give you a proper nice detailed walkthrough on the pistol itself. Okay, so here we have the pistol itself. Now as you can see, it's an incredibly true to like uh, replica of the real 1911. For those of you that have seen either our review on the Umarex limited edition or the Tanfolio Witness, you pretty much see that it's exactly the same gun. The only real difference is this one is done up in what they called or what they described as a distressed finish. Now, compared to the Umarex um, Special Edition, which I have in front of us today as well, as you can see, this one is very, very distressed. Um, there's loads of kind of markings. And I've seen on a few forums, people have said this has been a little bit overdone. Now, as you can see from the new Cybergun version, it's just basic wear. Um, there's a little bit of wear down here on the grip. Kind of looks like it's been taken in that for holster as well. And just on the edges here, you can just see somebody's, it's almost like somebody's just dremeled the sides just to roughen it up a little bit. Um, the main kind of splat as such is just on the side here. That's the only real kind of proper marking on it as such. Most of the other bits have just been um, where it's been filed or attacked by something just to finish the lines off. Just gives it that aged look. Now, to be completely honest, I prefer this version. The only kind of thing that I would change between the two is to have the Umarex um, logo here. They had the um, raising of the flag here. 
to me that's the only kind of real difference but anyway that's a different video in itself we'll do a comparison probably in a second video and we'll upload that at a later date so we're noting at this point this is a full metal construction pistol firing six millimeter plastic bbs now this is our first venture into six millimeter um, so it'd be quite nice to, to maybe go and fire this but we're pretty uncertain i'm not sure if i'm going to fire it yet because um, it is very much a collector's piece now this is 173 out of 240 ever made so i've been really lucky to get our hands on one of these as i've said at the start of the video now starting at the front you can see that it's just got some basic painted uh, decals on the side the cult logo and also just the original sort of the cult uh, markings everything that you see here is all metal the um, mag magazine release catch sorry, is metal the slide release catch is metal and the safety is metal as well little things um, also the pistol lanyard attachment point is also metal and what I quite like about this is it's kind of loose just adding to that aged kind of feel to it some of the other ones like the witness 1911 the loop is perfectly in there it doesn't move at all whereas this just kind of feels like it's been battered around a little bit which fits the look absolutely amazingly now flipping the gun over you can see that there aren't really many markings on this at all you just got a simple little F down here for the German market um, a really really nice thing here just saying M1911A1 just saying that it's six millimeter and also just here KWC made in Taiwan now apart from that that's the only markings on this pistol it's quite nice a lot of other replicas will have big caution signs along that part of the slide um, just general safety so it's really nice that they've decided to keep that off um, for this particular edition now the grips I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the grips I think the plastic I'm not 100% if you look at the Umarex one here they almost look plastic but these are actually wood these feel an awful lot better the ones on the cyber gun so I would be inclined to say that these are unfortunately plastic but the ones on the Umarex version are wood to be completely honest it's very hard to tell the difference if you do want to get wooden grips so I'm sure you could take these off um, varnish up some wooden grips and you'd be off on your way now the magazine is a full metal dropout magazine um, and I'm pretty certain this here is it's almost using like a square spring opposed to a normal round generic one as you can see also by the size of the magazine this is a six millimeter magazine it holds um, six millimeter BBs it's very very stiff to bring down but I think that's probably just because it's brand new now it uses 12 gram CO2 cartridges for anybody that's familiar with the Swiss Arms um, 1911s uh, the Tanfolia Witnesses or even some of the new Umarex pistols you'll know exactly how these magazines work you unscrew the little allen bolt at the bottom slot in your CO2 and just tighten it up with the allen key which is also provided in a box underneath the mountain of packaging so we'll put that in for a second one really neat feature about this pistol is that it is blowback meaning that every time you fire it does cycle the slide back giving you quite an effective and kind of realistic recoil now one thing I do love about these 1911 replicas is the fact that it's an open chamber if I take the magazine out hopefully you can see here that you can look straight in into the chamber and basically out the bottom of the grips and it's a really nice feature and I do like it when they do this with pistols so as I'm sure you just saw there all of the features on the side the slide release catch is perfectly functional also if you hold it back at this point and push it from the rear it does pop it out hopefully you can see there and you can field strip it now I'm not unfortunately going to field strip this pistol not in this video anyway as I don't really think there's much need to and much point now it's worth mentioning at this point really that the safety catch here is really really neat you can see it's nice and simple to use and it also features a grip safety as well so you do have to be holding the pistol correctly to actually pull the trigger now the sights are exactly what you'd expect from an original replica using these low profile combat sights now a lot of replicas coming out at the moment have got these match sights on fully adjustable um, they're a lot higher profile whereas this is just really nice and low um, mainly I'm assuming because it was easier to get our holsters there's nothing to snag and if you're using your sidearm um, in the theatre of conflict then it's not necessarily going to be for accuracy it's going to be as a last ditch attempt to get yourself out of a hole which is why a lot of these originals um, 
sort of the early era pistols never really had adjustable sights because unfortunately the guys uh, using them often being conscripts would only really use these as a last resort which is you know it's perfectly understandable and I do like the way that they've kept that really true to form as well now being a blowback pistol it's also worth mentioning that this is a single action only trigger now you cannot pull the trigger like this and cycle it you do have to either cock the slide back or cock the hammer back and then you can just pull the trigger making sure the grip safety is in there you go I've perfectly demonstrated there exactly how the grip safety works without uh, realizing what I was up to but anyway it's single action only obviously once you've fired that first shot and the slide cycles itself back it does then just reload itself so you don't have to worry about cocking the hammer every single time now I'll quickly flip this over again to give you a better look I'm in two minds whether to fire this pistol <laughs> it's one of those things I really want to but it's uh, it's definitely a collector's piece my honest advice is if you can find one go out and buy one it's either this or the Umarex one I think there was a thousand of the Umarex pistols made but only 240 of these so if you can find one definitely get one even if you don't like it it might be worth a little bit more in a few years time it might not now my understanding is these retail for about 200 pounds which is a little bit more than the everyday version um, which comes without all the bells and whistles so what we'll do is we'll just quickly move the gun around uh, zoom in a little bit so you can get a better look and uh, we'll conclude the review for you so this pretty much concludes our review for the cyber gun 1911 uh, and this is the d-day commemorative edition now i've been really impressed with this replica again from cyber gun it's an incredibly good show of effort as I said before with the last review that we did, I've been very, very impressed with their recent efforts. The quality of these pistols are second to none. Now I know they're coming out the KWC uh, market sort of factory place, but being branded as Cybergun, but it still is an incredible piece of kit. There's no creaks, there's no groans, there's nothing that kind of feels loose. And twins with all this lovely stuff that you get as well, it really adds to the occasion. Now obviously this isn't the cheapest gun in the world, only being a limited edition, it does come in at about £200, so it's quite expensive. That said, if you can find one, definitely try and get your hands on one. The little extra features here, I mean, I will be keeping them in the box as well. I'd recommend keeping hold of them as well. It's just really nice that they've actually gone through so much thought as to include all of this. They haven't just put like a gimmicky box together um, and just you know put a different decal down the slide they really have tried to set this out from the rest of the market the Umarex one that was out was really nice came in a lovely box um, and the gun looked absolutely incredible feels exactly the same as this mainly because it's virtually the same my only gripe if they put if Cybergun put the Umarex grips on this pistol then it would be for me the perfect um, kind of commemorative pistol out there I am quite tempted to uh, try and get a set of the grips and swap them over but anyway if you want to check out some closer pictures of this, we have put a big album together over on our Facebook page. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, and also, if you've got any questions, just feel free to post them below in the comments box and we'll try our best to answer them as best as we can. As for a firing view, I'm not sure if we'll be doing one, um, but it's a work in progress. We might, uh, we might do it, we might not. So anyway, thank you for watching our review. Hopefully you found it uh, slightly informative. And hopefully it gave you a better look at a gun that I don't think too many people are going to get their hands on. So all that's really left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask.